Okay, we're going to look at an example here, calculating our B vector, and then also look at it on the computer just to make sure we're clear about how that should look. All right, so you need to remember the formula for calculating that B vector. Um, so that is something you need to make sure you know. T cross N. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and calculate this. I've got my T vector here from previous examples. I've got my N vector here from a previous example as well. Uh, notice here I had written T of T, and I didn't write N of T. I just wrote N, but obviously that N is a function of T. You'd want both of these using the same parameterization, obviously, before you do that cross product. So we used this T vector to get that N vector, though. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and calculate this cross product. And I'm going to make sure, again, that I label all of my vectors here. So I've got my T, my N, and then my B vector that I'm going to calculate here. OK, so we're going to do T cross N. So we're going to set up that matrix uh, and calculate that cross product here. So determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. We have our i, j, k vectors across the top. And then in the i column, uh, we're going to have the i components of each of these in the correct order. Remember that. It might have been a while since you did too many cross products. Uh, in the j column, 1 over square root of 10. And in the k column, 3 over square root of 10 cosine t. All right, so these are the components of my t vector. Right? Again, make sure you're grabbing the right vector. Labeling all your work helps with that. And then I need the components of my n vector. And if you have these in the wrong order, remember that's going to mess up the signs on your cross product. OK, and then from here, it's just a matter of calculating this cross product at this point in the semester. That shouldn't be hard. Uh, it is common that I see students mess up I'm multiplying by 0. So you all know how to multiply by 0. Just be careful about that. Um, all right, so I'm going to just simplify as I go here. Um, in the i component of my cross product, I will have this product. So negative 1 over square root 10 sine t minus this product, which is 0. So I don't need to write that. And then in the j component, remember the minus sign out front of your cross product when you do the j component here. Uh, so a minus, and then I'm going to do this product. So that will be 3 over square root 10 sine squared t, positive 3 over square root 10 sine squared t, minus this product. Uh, so minus, and then I'll have a negative, so plus 3 over square root 10 cosine squared t. And then in my k component, um, I will have this product, which is 0, minus this product. So again, I'll have minus a negative. So that will be positive 1 over square root 10 cosine t. OK, as with many of the examples we've worked on, Pythagorean identity just keeps popping up. Uh, so you might notice that we have that going on here in the j component of my vector. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out the 3 square root of 10. And then what I'm left with, 3 over square root of 10, what I'm left with is that Pythagorean identity. So all of this here simplifies to 3 over square root 10. And don't forget the minus sign out front. And clean that up for my answer here. All right, so there is my b vector. Again, as we talked about uh, with the n vector, if you have a moment on a test or some situation like that where you want to verify that your calculations make sense, uh, you could verify that this is indeed a unit vector. So calculate the magnitude of that and verify that the magnitude of that vector is 1. And the other thing that should be true with this binormal vector is that it is perpendicular to both t and n. So you could verify that this b vector, when you dot product that with the t vector, you get 0. And also, when you take the b vector and dot product that with the n vector, that you get 0. So that's not something that's necessary to do, but it's just kind of a check to make sure that your answer is a little bit reasonable. All right, um, we're going to go look at this on the computer here. So here I have the same curve that we looked at previously. 
Uh, and I've got the graph of the curve and I've got the vectors that we looked at previously. I've got the position vector at a particular t value, about, about negative 5.15 it looks like. And then I've got these two vectors shown on here, the t vector purple and the n vector is blue. So without checking the box for where the b vector should be, you should be able to think about where the b vector should be using that right hand rule and thinking about that cross product. So if you think about the t vector cross the n vector and using that right hand rule, you should be able to understand that that b vector should be perpendicular to both of those and pointing backward into the, into the paper here. All right, I'm gonna go here to settings and I'm gonna check unit binormal vector and there it is, the direction I just said it should be pointing. And we can look at that as it moves along the curve here. We can see that whole TNB frame moving as we move along that curve. So uh, we talked about in a prior video that this TNB frame in some sense is sort of like a traveling coordinate system. These are all one unit long. And so thinking about the scale on our axes here, one unit long. Uh, and I've got a tangent vector in the direction of motion, my normal vector perpendicular to that on the concave side of the curve, and then that B vector as that cross product. So similar to the way your i, j, k vectors uh, at the origin, with their tail all at the origin, form this mutually orthogonal uh, frame of unit vectors, which generate these x, y, z axes. Uh, you can also think about this T and B frame, like this traveling coordinate system along that curve. Um, we can also go up here to the settings too, and uh, I can check a few other things here. I can check show the whole T and B frame. It will label those. It's also given us uh, some decimal approximations up here in the corner for the T, N, and B vectors at a particular T value. And then you can also see these coordinate plane or the T and B planes. Uh, the osculating, rectifying, and normal planes formed by those vectors, and you can kind of watch that also as you drag along there, how that all uh, moves along there. So that looks a lot like that 3D coordinate system that I had built, where I had those pieces of cardboard um, framing off the first octant. And, and that's the idea here, is that we end up with this traveling coordinate system as we move along this curve. Okay, we'll look at some more examples with some more complicated curves in some later videos.